I was born and raised on the land. The land raised me for the first 15 years. I, uh, I lived in the bush and you know, we had to move when I was 15 because the government made the forest into a provincial forest. So that's my first experience of injustice in regards to land. Uh, at first I didn't really connect with the environment because I'm from a very uh, polluted place with 40% of Canada's petrochemical industry. And so um, I didn't connect with that at all. I saw uh, granite and rocks all in big piles on next to the water that would be taken off in ships to different places um, to make like roads and um, to be sold. And so um, that's how I would see where rocks would come from. And then I would see uh, the big smokestacks in my community. And I would think that's how clouds are made. And so I got very confused at a young age when I was in grade five. And my teacher was talking about how clouds are made and how the water system works. And I didn't believe her because I thought they were actually made in my backyard. One thing that concerns me is the new, cu new the um, pipelines that are being put under the um, lakes. Like that concerns you because like what if it pops or busts in? And that's already happened to, to a couple of them. I I don't think people have a clue about what the, the what the government accepts as you know, safe or what the, those companies those. Uh, fracking companies or energy, any kind of development company um, can do you know, with the wastes and how they clean that up. An image that's used a lot where you see kids playing baseball and then a giant refinery in the back uh, around and that's what we grew up knowing that was actually where my daycare was and then we moved to uh, then we moved the daycare to the middle of the reserve because we thought it would be safer. Um, so I was that generation that was there and then was moved and so that's half of where I spent my daycare time and taking my puffer um, and practicing uh, like spills, like in case a spill happens, what to do or and like just like a fire drill pretty much. You have to stop coming on to Indigenous communities, assuming that you're allowed to take resources right from under people, that that is a grave injustice because all that, all that we've seen is that this system, the colonial system, has been getting rich off the lands of Indigenous people and leaving Indigenous people on lands that they have literally destroyed. The environment is suffering. We have, you know, these oil companies that come on our communities and extract and leave the communities with poison water, mining companies, they, they leave poison water, they leave destruction in their path and they don't clean up, they don't fix anything and they have gained so much money from doing this um, that they've used that money in an abusive way. Being from a poor neighborhood or being in an indigenous community or being from an immigrant community might be a reason why they think it's okay to put a refinery beside your house because you don't have as, as big a voice.